of the size and type that you want to find. And in Bisha and Zara, uh, we have the examples. So you usually conclude if there is one, there could be 10, and we should find the next one. Moving forwards, the mining industry has an opportunity to focus on capacity building in terms of education, skills development, and creation of sustainable mining services industry to support the growing mineral industry to maximum effect for ever trends. The prospective geology and competitive investment regime make Eritrea one of the most attractive and rewarding mining investment opportunities. Indeed, the future of Eritrea's mining industry appears bright and is a gateway for national economic development. Mr. Ali, considering the current world financial crisis, uh, wouldn't you say that uh, it would be more of a curse than uh, it would be a blessing to us? Absolutely not. It is in fact more of a blessing because we have a development-oriented and well-cultured people. There is zero tolerance to corruption. We have set in place a sound and an attractive mining law that is investment-friendly to any interested company, be it foreign or local. Our mineral deposit is huge with the potential to go on for generations to come. There is political stability unparalleled anywhere else in Africa. The peace and security is exceptional. And Eritrea is by and large known for its reputation of respecting agreements it makes. So considering all these assets, why should it be a curse? What we should not be doing is be obsessed with that single sector and throw away other assets we are proud of. Assets such as the workaholic spirit of nationals, infrastructural developments, housing, agriculture, marine resources and tourism. You see, our development strategy is multifaceted and we should not gamble away all our eggs in one basket. We should not allow these assets to be taken hostage by this single sector. What we should be doing is use the gains acquired from mineral resource to jumpstart our national economy as a whole and allow it to act as a catalyst to initiate a trust to our national institutions. A lot of uh, exploration has gone on and uh, if you look at the number of uh, companies who are currently doing exploration in their trade, it's quite uh, encouraging and uh, we talk of gold, we talk of copper, we talk of zinc, and other byproducts like, uh, like potash. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very good potential as far as uh, uh, mining is concerned. And uh, we believe, I believe uh, it should be able to, I mean, open up uh, Eritrea for a better future. Yeah. In terms of mineral potential, it seems that the shield here has tremendous potential. Of course, the famous Bisha deposit is already in production and uh, I think will help the economy of Eritrea a lot. And if we find more deposits like Bisha, it will really help Eritrea, it'll help the company or the country prosper, it'll create employment, and will be extremely beneficial. Oh yeah, for me, for me personally? Yeah, absolutely. What I remember when I was working with, uh, with Sub-Sahara, on the Zara project, yeah, the support that we received from the administration and from the from the Eritrean Defence Force, oh, excellent, excellent. I, I, I'm very, very pleased with the level of support that we got, and yeah, we were able to do we were able to do the work quite safely. Yeah. Eritrea has a development-oriented and well-cultured people. 
it has set in place a sound and an attractive mining law that is investment friendly to any interested company, be it foreign or local. There is a political stability unparalleled anywhere else in Africa. So considering all these assets, the blessing of the mining sector, Eritrea will unquestionably make it into today's world that is suffering economic crisis.